Hi guys, it's Helen, and welcome to the first book-themed video of my new schedule. So this week to start off, I don't really have a particular theme um, in terms of books. I will have some in the coming weeks, but today I just want to talk to you about some of the stuff that I've been reading in the past in the past few months, but more or less in the last week. That's when I've done most of my reading. I have three amazing, amazing, amazing books that you should read. They all have to do with the entertainment industry. Um, duh, I want to be a screenwriter. So of course they have things to do with the entertainment industry. They are all nonfiction. They're all more or less histories, a mix of histories, biographies, behind the scenes, everything. I love reading things about this. I love fiction as well, and I'll get back to that soon, but I was super hyped about these books this week. So without further ado, here we go. So the first book that I'm going to talk about today is a book called Nothing Like a Dame by Eddie Shapiro. Um, Eddie is a theater journalist who has compiled 20 interviews with ladies of theater that he deems like the leading ladies that really encompass what theater should be and who were really the queens of the stage when they were performing and if and if they are still performing. These uh, interviews encompass people, first of all, from Elaine Stritch to Cheetah Rivera to Angela Lansbury to Donna Murphy and Karen Zimba and um, Patti Lapone. He talks to Patti Lapone and Betty Buckley and Sutton Foster and Adina Menzel and Kristen Chenoweth and uh, Laura Benanti. So it really goes from the uh, really beginning, well, not necessarily beginnings, but um, back from the 40s and 50s all the way up to the present, which I love. It's, it's fascinating to hear and see what these women were going through and thinking about when they were performing and if they are still performing, but it also more or less functions as a sort of history of Broadway theater, which is really amazing. A lot of the things that these women talk about are how theater has changed over the years, how they started, and how it might not be easier for women today to really get into theater as it was in like the 50s and 60s when they were the all the rage. And they also talk about some of the great composers and um, Audrey McDonald is another one that I forgot to mention. How dare I not mention our queen, six time Tony winning Audrey McDonald, but he interviews her. And it's so interesting just to see these ladies so open to him. And uh, um, yeah, for nothing else, I'm a huge, huge musical theater fanatic. I look up to all of these ladies. My goodness, I love them all so, so much. Oh, and Carol Channing. He talks to Carol Channing. Yes. So moving from theater to film, I have As You Wish, Inconceivable Tales from the Making of The Princess Bride by Carrie Elways. This is a very quick read. I got through it within about a day and a half, two days. I don't know if it was because I'm a quick reader or because I love the material so much. So this is basically, um, basically how The Princess Bride was made. And The Princess Bride, by the way, if you haven't seen it, is one of the greatest movies period ever made. It's one of the best written scripts ever put on cinema. And, Will and William Goldman is still alive, so thank God for him. It's so interesting to hear all these people had wonderful, wonderful times filming and all these... Man, Carrie Elways and Robin Wright and Rob Reiner and Wallace Shawn and Mandy Patinkin and Billy Crystal and Carol Kane and all of these people giving such wonderful accounts of not only how this movie was made, but accounts of um, the things that really got to me in this book, whereas all the anecdotes about Andre the Giant who played Fezzik and how he really was such a gentle giant and oh man, this is such a good book. It's so heartwarming and for a movie that has lasted so long and didn't do well initially commercially and then found a home through VHS and it's passed down to generations and adults and kids can like it. It is one of my favorite movies ever. Um, I have said so in both of my DVD slash Blu-ray collections. Definitely, if you love The Princess Bride or if you love filmmaking in general and film history, read this book. Um, it's structured in a way where Carrie always um, has done doing most of the narration, but if you look here, um, this little gray speck here, he also has anecdotes 
and quotes from other people who were involved on set in the movie. So the producers, the actors, many of the people who were on set. It's just a wonderful, wonderful look at the making of this movie and a great companion to the bonus features that you'll find on the DVD editions of the movie, especially the 25th anniversary version, which I own. Finally, most of you will know who Alicia Malone is if you are in the familiar with the YouTube critics uh, or film critics in general, the film critic circle. But she has written a wonderful, wonderful book um, called Backwards and in Heels, The Past, Present, and Future of Women Working in Film. It It is pretty much what it sounds like. It is a history of women from the beginning of cinema to the present day. and. Um, it's so interesting because so many of these people, especially from the early days of film, I had no idea about. Frances Marion, Lois Weber, Margaret Booth, the first film editor, Helen Holmes, thank you, uh, the action hero, Mae West, Hattie McDaniel, Anna Mae Wong, oh, Hedy Lamar, Olivia de Havilland, well, I mean, we're getting into people that I've heard of, but my point being, it's a wonderful visceral look at the history of women in film and how they went from being very prominent in the studio system in the 19 up to the up to the beginning of the 1930s and then being pushed out of behind the scenes roles and then pushed out of really meaty roles later on but what i like about this book is not just the history it shines light on present day filmmakers like um Meryl Streep, Ava DuVernay, it focuses on Carrie Putnam, Maria Geis, Gina Davis, America Ferreira, Maya Taylor, Octavia Spencer, Jennifer Siebel Newsom, Debbie Reynolds, and Carrie Fisher. All these wonderful, wonderful women. And then it talks about behind the scenes and efforts and the research that has gone into proving that women are being discriminated against in Hollywood. She talks to Dr. Stacey L. Smith, whose work I am actually pretty familiar with. I'm so glad that she's getting some more um, publicity in this book because her research at USC Annenberg is phenomenal and it is invaluable. It is amazing, all the work that she's done. I would love to get the chance to work with her on her research in the future. And she's done so much research on women not not just women, but people of color, people in the LGBT community, how they are represented both in front of and behind the camera. It's so wonderful to hear Alicia talk about the efforts of these women of the past and how they've influenced women of the present. And she talk, she even talks about the people who are in executive positions. But she talks about Nicole Perlman, who wrote the Guardians of the Galaxy script, believe it or not. Yes, Guardians of the Galaxy, written by a woman. Um, and she's writing and she's writing Captain Marvel with Michael Fave too. So yay! I absolutely love this book. I'm actually going to recommend it to the film history profs that I've had in college. I think this is a really valuable asset for any film history class. This is the first book that I've come across that's really focused on how much female filmmakers have contributed to the history of film and how important they are. And they deserve to be taught in film history classes. Just saying. Um, Alicia Malone, I applaud you for writing this book. I'm a I was a huge fan of yours before. You're a wonderful expert. I'd love to get the chance to work with you someday. But thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is it for books that I have been reading recently. I've moved on to my next book now. I'm reading The Invention of Hugo Cabret. Most of you guys will know how much I love the movie Hugo. I'm so excited to go back to the source material. But these are all my unread books. My unread books are separated from my read books. But well, basically, my goal for the next year or so is to try to cut down on the space taken up by all the unread books because I have so many books that I need to read. I won't specifically talk about the books I'm reading currently every week, but I will try to give an update when I can when I talk about books. Um, if you liked what you've seen here, you can subscribe here on my channel to see new videos every single week. Next week is going to be more of a free-for-all, but I think I may be talking about a certain European singing competition. You can also subscribe to my second channel for vlogs every once in a while. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Tumblr. Be sure to check out my video last week. It's all about how I'm such a pop punk person 10 years after it was cool. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you keep living awesome lives and I'll see you soon. Bye.